All right, good evening. My name is Catherine from SEB Housing, and this is the information session for the upcoming 12 affordable um, rental units at Richmond Meadows 2 in Nantucket. These units are going to be made available as part of the second part of phases five and six of this larger community. And the purpose of this session is to give a little bit of background information on the affordable units. I'll also discuss the application, eligibility, and lottery processes and what to expect after the lottery. Um, as you can see, there's some slides that I'll be flipping through um, during this session. A lot of this information is in the information packet that you should have access to if you go on our website um, and look up under our affordable rental opportunities. You will see a uh, copy of the application as a PDF and also a copy of the information packet as a PDF. Um, so this information session is being recorded. It will be posted to SCB Housing's YouTube channel, so anyone who um, wants to view it after tonight can do so. Just a little bit of background information to get started on who SCB Housing is. So we are an off-site affordable housing consulting group. We're not the on-site management team at Richmond Meadows. We haven't seen the units in person, but we've been hired by the developer to market the affordable units conduct this information session and collect and review applications before running the lottery. So in the initial phases, SEB Housing, we are your main point of contact rather than the management office. But then further along in the process, the on-site management team at Richmond Meadows will be taking over as your main point of contact. So there's a few steps in this process, the first being to apply for the lottery and be found eligible for the affordable housing program based on what you self-report in your application. You'll be in touch with SCB Housing during that process. We can answer any questions you might have as you're filling out the application and um, we'll eventually run that lottery. The second step in the process after the lottery is if you are one of the top households on the waiting list following the lottery, you'll be put in touch with the leasing office. They will determine your lease eligibility, which is separate from the screenings that SCB Housing does. So, it might include credit checks, um, rental history checks, that sort of thing. And then finally, the third step in the process is if you are found lease eligible by the leasing office, you will be directed back to us at SCB Housing, and we can um, will then be you'll be then be asked to submit your income verification, like pay stubs, uh, verification of your bank statements, and that sort of thing. And um, we'll work with you. It might take about 10 days to go through that process um, until we have a completed application from you. So as I mentioned, um, please go to our website if you haven't already, scbhousing.com. Um, you'll select I want to rent, and then you'll see that Richmond Meadows 2 has a page that is specific to this property with a downloadable application. Um, the information packet, like I said, contains most of the material that I'll be covering tonight. And um, even if you're watching this session, we recommend that you take a look at that document. Uh, if you choose to apply, you first need to complete that lottery application and you can submit it to us in one of several ways. Uh, the most popular way to send it in to us is by email as an attachment. You can scan it to us. There's also a fax number on the first page of the application if you'd rather do that. And um, you know, pick whatever option works for you to get it into us. Applications are due by December 9th, um, so a little bit over a month from now. And um, I should also mention, too, if you're already living on Nantucket, you can pick up a lottery application at the public library um, in Nantucket and also at the Richmond Meadows Leasing Office. They have copies, uh, hard copies of the application if you want to grab those. <clears throat> we encourage you to apply as soon as possible if you know you're interested in this opportunity. And um, you don't need to be a current resident of Nantucket to apply for the lottery, but there will be several units that have local preference for residents of Nantucket. So we will be, I'll be mentioning that a little bit later on as well. Um, so, I, like I said, this is a larger property that has already had some phases. And this is phase, phase five and six of Richmond Meadows. Um, the larger housing community has a total of 225 rental apartments. This lottery is for 12 um, affordable units. And um, it's located off of Old, Old South Road in Nantucket. 
And um, in terms of the breakdown for the units, you can see them on your screen here now. There's a few income tiers. And um, two of the units, sorry, all, let me talk about utilities first. So all tenants are responsible for electricity costs, which will also include um, your um, electric heating, hot water, cooking, also cold water and sewer charges will be your responsibility if you're renting one of the 110% or 120% units. For the 280% units, I'm going to scroll back because what I'm seeing right here is not accurate. So I'm going to scroll back here. For the 280% units, that studio and the one bedroom that are 80% of area median income, <clears throat> um, the water and sewer charges will be included. So the 12 affordable apartments that are being made available are only going to be made available to households that have income at either the 80% of area median income threshold, the 110% area median income threshold, or the 120% of the Nantucket area median income. Um, so as you can see here, there's going to be three studio units. And um, two of those are going to be at the 120% price point, which is $3,049. The other studio is going to be at the 80% of AMI uh, price point, which is the rent will be $1,752. There are also six one bedrooms. You'll see that there's one at 80%. The rent is $1,998. There is four, bed four um, one bedrooms at the 110% uh, price point, which will be $3,173. <clears throat> and then finally, um, there is one one bedroom that is at the 120% AMI threshold or price point, which will be $3,479. There's also three two bedroom units. And um, one of those is at 110%. And that means that the rent is $3,173. And then there's two Three bed, two three, uh, two two bedrooms. Excuse me, at the 120% price point. So the rent will be three thousand eight hundred and seventy nine dollars. So three different income tiers here, depending on where your total household income falls, you'll be uh, eligible for one of those, one of those um, price points. There, the affordable rents are not set in accordance with uh, a household's individual income. So the rents don't change. These are the set rents for these units. For this um, housing program, the rents are set using a formula that's based on HUD, which is Housing and Urban Development um, Area Median Income for the Nantucket area. The rent will likely increase or change once per year, typically in the spring when HUD releases their AMIs. Uh, advance notice would always be given, though, and the rents can't change in the first in the um, during a lease term. So if you were to um, sign a lease for January 1st, for example, or for February 1st, in this case, maybe, uh, your rents couldn't change until at least February 2026. So there will be more interested and eligible applicants than there are available units because there's only these 12 units available. Um, so that's why we're having a lottery process because we know that there's going to be or there already is more interest in these units than, um, than the number of units we have. So they'll only be made available to households who qualify for one of these price points. The four eligibility criteria that I wanted to mention for the affordable housing program are on your screen now. So the first is that households have to have qualifying income and assets. We'll talk about that in another, uh, another couple minutes. The second thing to keep in mind for eligibility purposes is that household priority is going to be given based on household composition or how many people are in your household. So for example, if you're a one person household or a couple that shares a bedroom, you're generally going to be considered a type one household and you would not have priority for two, two bedroom, a two bedroom apartment. Um, larger type two households would have priority for those units. So a little more about that is in the information packet. And when you're filling out your application, you're going to select which household type you are based on the descriptions that are in the um, application. And then um, 
this doesn't come up often, but households can't own a home um, upon move-in and also cannot have financial interest in the development or be a related party. So if you are, um, if you work with the developer or the management company, you may not be eligible for the opportunity. Um, to circle back on the eligibility, the first eligibility criteria, the income um, limits there, I'm going to explain that a little bit more now. Um, just give me one moment here. So since these are affordable units, um, like I said, they're only being made available to households that qualify for the affordable housing program. And um, they're being made available at prices that are below what the market rate units at Richmond Meadows are being rented for. So the maximum income limits are on your screen now. They're also in the information packet on the application. But if you are qualifying for a, um, if you're a one person household and in order to qualify for an 80% AMI unit, you would have to have a total household income, total annual household income that's less than $76,750 because that's the maximum program income limit. Um, if you're looking to rent a studio and you're that one person household, your income would need to be between about $42,000 and $76,750 in order to qualify because these are the minimum qualifying income amounts. Um, these minimum income limits are not set in stone. So if you have a lot of assets that you're able to um, access to be able to pay rent, then the leasing office at Richmond Meadows may qualify you and say that you do have enough income in your household if you're a little bit below that $42,000 that you see there. Those minimum qualifying income are a little bit flexible depending on what type of assets you might have. But these maximum income limits that you see at the top of the screen, those are um, set in stone. Those are the program, um, those are the program um, regulations right there. So you wouldn't you would not be eligible for this lottery if you were a one person household and you make above 76, 750 a year. Income in terms of how we qualify households for this program is counted as a projection of your income over the next 12 months for all household members. Um, all income for household members is included. So that includes bonuses, overtime, seasonal employment. The only exceptions to that are minors. So anyone under the age of 18 who is earning a wage, we're not going to count their wage income. And if you have a dependent full-time student who's working, we would only count the first $480 of their wages when we're determining their your eligibility for the program. We are required to count gross income. So the, the program um, requires us to do that. That's what you make before taxes. So even though most people are not taking home the amount that's listed on your pay stub, um, that is what we need to Count. How we calculate it is not one size fits all. So everybody's income circumstances vary. And some people have a consistent weekly salary. It's the same amount in their pay stub every week or biweekly. But then there's some people who are working seasonally or who might be self-employed. And um, if that's the case, we may need to have, we need, may need to ask for more information from you in order to project your income for the next 12 months. But in general, if you have been making an income, we are going to assume that you're going to continue making it going forward. So when you're filling out the application, make sure that you're listing not just wages, but if you have any social security benefits coming into the household, um, workman's compensation, a pension, um, alimony, unemployment benefits, whatever it might be, just make sure that you um, list that there. <coughs> Excuse me. If you have a mobile housing voucher like a Section 8 or an MRVP voucher, these minimum qualifying incomes won't apply to you because your voucher, the agency that administers your voucher is not is going to pick up um, a portion of your rent and set your rent share. So just know that if you have a Section 8 voucher, you can ignore those qualifying minimum incomes. Um, assets, there is no asset limit for affordable rental opportunities. So you might have a significant amount of assets, you might be retired, that would be perfectly fine. Um, we do see, need, still need to collect information related to assets, although there is no asset limit. So 
if you have an asset that is generating income, we would need to see that. So that's why we still will need your bank statements, uh, retirement statements, if you have a retirement account and that sort of thing. So as I mentioned earlier, you want to apply as soon as you decide that you are interested. And once you do, um, we're going to review the lottery application that you have, contact you if anything appears to be missing so you can uh, correct it and resubmit. I also want to mention too that if you're interested in more than one household, more than one unit size, you can apply for, for example, a studio and a one bedroom if you're interested in both of those um, unit sizes. So just make sure that you do that if you think you might be interested in more than one uh, unit size. If you're found eligible after submitting the lottery application to us, um, you will receive an email from SCB Housing that has your lottery application number, and that will be in the form of a dot a series of numbers. So if you're the first person to be found eligible for the Richmond Meadows lottery, your lottery number would be a dot zero zero one, for example. That's just an anonymous number so that your name is not going to be called during the lottery itself. It's not a ranking of any sort at this point. And um, that email will also confirm whether or not your household um, reported qualifying for local preference. So if you currently live or work in Nantucket, you would have indicated that and you would need to supply information confirming that after the lottery takes place. Um, that email will also confirm the bedroom sizes that you applied for. So if you applied for a um, studio and a one bedroom, that should show there. So just make sure you're reviewing that email with your lottery application number thoroughly to make sure that everything is um, matches what you think you put on the application. That email will also have an attachment um, for a guide called a documentation requirements guide. And that will provide a lot of detail as to what you might need to gather for further down the line. So if, um, if you're working, how many pay stubs and how many bank statements you might need to, to set aside for after your lease qualifies. So it kind of gives you a little bit of a cheat sheet to prepare for that. If at any point during the application process you're found to be ineligible for the lottery, maybe you're over income, um, you'd be informed and you're encouraged to contact SCB Housing if you have any questions about that uh, denial notice that you've received. On your application, you will have already you will have also indicated your household type. So as I mentioned, smaller households can apply for larger units, but in general, larger households are going to have priority over smaller households. Um, as an example, a type one household can apply for a two bedroom unit, but all type two households are going to have priority on the waiting list. So they'll have more favorable positions on the waiting list than a type one household. So the lottery itself is going to be held on January 9th, and um, it will be the same format as this information session in that it will be uh, via Zoom and the lottery numbers will be drawn from a box. Um, well, actually, they'll probably be randomized in this case because we, um, we have a lot of, we assume we're going to have a lot of applications for this lottery. So what we'll do is we'll digitally randomize the numbers and screen share that for you so you can see the results of the drawing. Every lottery number is going to be drawn in the lottery. Sometimes when you think of lotteries, you think, okay, there's 12 units, so there's going to be 12 numbers chosen. That's not the case here because the purpose of the lottery is to establish an order for the waiting list. So uh, in general, it's great to be picked early in the lottery. You hear your number early on, but we still need to sort the results by um, household type and local preference and whether someone needs a disabled accessible unit. So all of that sorting takes place by SCB housing immediately following the lottery. And then um, after the lottery, we, um, we send those waiting lists out to you so you can see um, where you fall on the individual waiting list, whether it's 80 per, an 80% waiting list, a 110% AMI waiting list, or the 120% waiting list. Um, when you're reviewing that email from us, with the waiting list attached to it. So this is after the lottery now, 
and we've sorted the results. We're sharing that with all of the lottery applicants. Uh, you can see where you fall on the waiting list by finding your lottery application number on the waiting list. And at that point, you'll have a better idea as to whether or not you'll be moving forward in the process to apply for a lease with the leasing office. Because remember, at this point, um, you haven't submitted any of your income information to us. So we're on to the second step after the lottery. You've applied for the lottery. You've now uh, had a placement on the waiting list. And now you need to um, apply for a lease with the leasing office. So you'll be in touch with the management office at that point. And you'll have about a week to um, connect with them and fill out their lease eligibility screening. Um, so remember, the SCB housing doesn't do the lease eligibility screening. We screen your lottery application. And then after you are found lease eligible, we're going to do your program eligibility. Um, be aware that the leasing office will likely invite more households to complete a lease screening than there are available units. So for this lottery, there's one one bedroom, 80% AMI unit, but probably four or more households will be invited from the waiting list to complete the lease screening. That's typical of management companies because they don't want the process of leasing the units to be slowed down by um, you know, applicants who maybe aren't responding, who have decided that they're no longer interested in the opportunity. So um, just be aware that you may be called forward when um, you are not the first person on the waiting list. So once you're lease approved, um, that's the point in the process where you'll be able to choose or select the unit, put it under reservation, and then you'll be referred back to SEB Housing, and we will contact you to coordinate um, your submission of the income, asset, and tax documentation that we'll need from you in order to conduct your final program eligibility review. So hopefully by that point, you've taken a look at the um, documentation requirements guide, you know how many pay stubs you need to submit, and um, you have that all ready for us. There's a lot of information that needs to be submitted, so we work with you throughout the process. We don't expect everyone to send everything in on the first try, um, so we'll work with you on that. Um, once you're leased, you're done with income eligibility screenings until the lease renewal date. So. Probably if you sign a lease in February around this time next year, you would be asked to provide your income information again to confirm if you're still eligible for the program. But um, that will be, you know, at least six to nine months after you lease up. So you'll be done with screenings for a little while. And um, hopefully after that first year or leading up to the first year, you want to continue living in these apartments because you, you've loved your time there. We hope so. Um, if that's the case, then you will need to recertify your income with the leasing office prior to renewing that lease. Um, to give you an idea of um, whether or not you would still qualify the next year, so if your income has increased when it's coming up to your lease renewal for the affordable apartment, um, if your income has increased, that's fine. So if it's now above 80 if it's now above the threshold, that maximum income amount for the 80%, 110%, or 120% AMI unit, um, you might still be eligible for the affordable housing program as long as your total household income doesn't now exceed 140% of the current year's AMI. So to give you an example of that, a household of two for this lottery will have qualified for an 80% AMI unit um, with an income at or below 76,750, that same family can make up to $107,450 at the time of the recertification in order to remain eligible to rent the affordable apartment. So there's some wiggle room there if you have a, um, you know, if you get a promotion or if you start a new job, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're not going to be eligible for the apartment any longer. Um, so that was everything I wanted to get through in the information packet. I just want to remind anyone who's watching that um, you can email us any questions that you think of after seeing this or after, as you're reviewing the lottery application. Um, and you can email us at info at scbhousing.com. And just a reminder that the application deadline for Richmond Meadows 2 for this lottery is December 9th. And you would need to have your um, you would need to have emailed us 
that day by 2 p.m. or have it postmarked um, and in the mail by 2 p.m. on December 9th to be eligible for this lottery. So again, if you have any questions after the fact, um, please email us um, and we'll be happy to help. And we look forward to getting your application. Thanks, everyone. Have a good night.